Hi everyone. We've seen how these three stacking methods work when we're faced with subtracting numbers that require a bit of regrouping. Today, I'm going to show you how they stack up when you're faced with tricky regrouping involving zeros. Plus, I'll show you a new method that can be particularly handy in this situation. It's called the compensation or give and take model. Okay, first up, partial differences with regrouping or borrowing as many like to call it. As usual, the first step is to expand each of the numbers. In this situation, as you can see, there is nothing to expand on the top. No problem, however. Simply regroup so that the tens columns ends up with a hundred and then regroup again so that the ones columns ends up with a 10. And now you're good to go. On to the standard algorithm. Again, this method pairs quite well with the method that I just showed you because it provides some insight into why the regrouping tricks work the way they do. From my experience as a grade three, four, and five teacher, kids find this regrouping a bit perplexing and need a lot of practice before they get the procedure down. Managing the regrouping this way makes it a lot easier. It also works well for larger numbers. Here is the standard procedure. And here is the simplified version. When we use this model of partial differences, there are really no new tricks to learn. The only issue is that you need to deal with a lot more negative numbers to combine at the end. This requires some mental math practice too, as you can see. Finally, let's take a look at the compensation or give and take model. This pairs well with the standard algorithm. There is no number expanding, and you should subtract starting from the right side of the equation to the left. The trick here is to change those pesky numbers by making them either a little bit larger or a little smaller. Now, that's an easier equation to solve. Time to subtract. With this method, you need to compensate for the fact that the difference between the two numbers is one smaller than it should be. So, this time we'll add one and voila, problem solved. Let's try another. This time, let's change the top number by two in order to make it easier to work with. There, that's better. Now we need to remember to compensate because the difference between them is smaller than it should be. Let's add two and perfect. Solution complete. The compensation method also works in situations like this. This time, we change the bottom number to make it a lot easier to subtract. How do we compensate now? Well, again, the difference between the two numbers is smaller than it should be. But if I add one, everything is back in balance. So there you go. Try out some of these interesting methods. Which do you like the best? Just remember that no matter what, each one of these methods requires a lot of practice. Good luck everyone and happy subtracting. <laughs>